Hello, my name is Sam. I am a current graduate student at Northwestern University in their master's program of prosthetics and orthotics. I will be presenting on the field of prosthetics and orthotics as a profession. So what is the field of prosthetics and orthotics? Prosthetist and orthotist are considered an allied health profession that works with physicians, physical therapists, occupational therapists, and other healthcare providers to create a multidisciplinary patient-centered healthcare network. We specifically design and fit patients with orthoses and prostheses. Prosthetists and orthotists work with a range of ages from pediatric and adolescent populations to adult and geriatric populations. Prosthetists and orthotists work with a range of patients with different pathologies. Some that you might have heard of are cerebral palsy, stroke, traumatic brain injury, scoliosis, osteoarthritis, as well as people with amputations. Prosthetists and orthotists work in settings such as patient care facilities, rehabilitation facilities, hospitals, universities, and private clinics. So who is a prosthetist? A prosthetist designs, fabricates, and fits custom-made artificial limbs or prostheses and provides related patient care. On this slide, you can see many different types of prostheses, from ranging from lower limb to upper limb. On the upper left corner, you can see a patient with a transtibial or a below knee amputation. On the upper right hand corner, this patient has a transfemoral or above the knee amputation. On the lower left hand corner, you can see a patient with a partial hand amputation. And on the lower left, you can see a patient with a transhumeral or above the elbow amputation. So what is an orthotist? An orthotist designs, fabricates, and fits custom orthopedic braces or orthoses, as well as prefabricated devices and provides related patient care. Orthoses are externally applied devices that are designed and fitted to the body to achieve different biomechanical goals, such as control and alignment, correcting a deformity, or protecting and supporting an injury. On this slide, you can see some examples of orthoses. You can see an ankle foot orthosis in the upper left corner. You see foot orthoses that are inserted into shoes in the upper right corner. In the middle is an off-the-shelf knee brace. In the bottom left corner is a cervical thoracic orthosis or a neck brace. In the lower right hand corner is a thoracic lumbar sacral orthosis, otherwise known as a custom back brace. There are several different roles that are considered part of the prosthetic and orthotics field. First, there is the clinician or the certified prosthetist orthotist, which provides comprehensive prosthetic and orthotic care to patients. There is the clinical assistant who works directly with patients under the supervision of the clinician. There is a technician who works with the clinician to fabricate and repair any devices that are provided to the patient. The podorthist who provides orthotic services that are specifically for the foot and ankle. And finally, the orthotic fitter, who provides orthotic services specifically off-the-shelf orthoses. For the remainder of the presentation, we'll be focusing on the education, training, and experience of the clinician or the certified prosthetist orthotist. Moving on to the education of a certified prosthetist and orthotist. A certified prosthetist and orthotist must obtain a bachelor's degree in prosthetics and orthotics or in a related field. Prior to applying to a master's program in prosthetics and orthotics, you must complete six prerequisite courses, anatomy, biology, chemistry, physics, physiology, and psychology. After, they must attend a two-year master's program at one of the 12 schools in the country. Once they have graduated, they must complete an 18-month combined residency in prosthetics and orthotics or two 12-month residencies, one in orthotics and one in prosthetics. At the end of the residency, they must complete and pass a national and or state board exam. There are five exams in total. There is a combined prosthetic and orthotic written exam, a simulation exam for both prosthetics and orthotics, and a live clinical patient management exam for prosthetics and one for orthotics. 
To continue their education, certified prosthetists and orthotists must complete 20 hours of mandatory continued education per year. In order to be successful in the field of prosthetics and orthotics, you must have good communication skills, whether it be verbal or written. You need to be able to communicate effectively with your patients as well as other healthcare providers, such as physicians, physical therapists, and occupational therapists. You should also be good at or enjoy problem solving. A lot of the field is identifying problems based on what the patient is telling you and your observations. It is how you use your education and training to come up with solutions to those problems that makes you a great prosthetist or orthotist. Another is to have good hand skills. This skill can be developed and worked on as you improve through your education. You must be compassionate about helping and caring for patients. Your compassion comes out through the work that you do and how you handle your patients. The last is not so much a skill, but a character trait that is imperative in the field of prosthetics and orthotics, and that is to be a lifelong learner. The field of prosthetics and orthotics is not a stagnant field. There is always new technology coming out, and it is your responsibility to continue your education and learn about the new technology that benefits your patients. The training of a certified prosthetist and orthotist starts in the master's program. Within the master's program, students go through main courses such as cervical and spinal orthoses, upper and lower limb prosthetics, upper and lower limb orthotics. For each course, students learn the biomechanics and design features of each device, as well as how to fabricate them. Students also go through other courses, such as materials, where they can learn about the different materials used in fabrication, behavior sciences, where they can learn key communication skills and interpersonal skills that will aid in practice, assessment course, where they can learn how to obtain subjective and objective information from the patients, as well as establish clin clinical and patient goals, and create a treatment plan that addresses those. Students will also learn administration concepts, such as coding devices, documentation, and insurance protocols. After completing their master's program from one of the 12 schools in the country, the recent graduate must complete a combined 18-month residency for prosthetics and orthotics, or two 12-month residencies, one for prosthetics and one for orthotics. This is the experience experience that the resident prosthetist orthotist needs in order to become a certified prosthetist orthotist. During residency, residents are exposed to a variety of patients that exhibit different pathologies and age ranges that cover all of the devices that they learned about in their master's program. All residencies are a little bit different, but typically residents will start out observing other clinicians, then move into a more assistant role until they are competent enough to work independently seeing patients. Residency is a time to continue learning about different devices, work on hand skills, as well as creating an interprofessional network that will sculpt the resident's career. With this experience, students learn how to properly complete an assessment, which is obtaining subjective and objective goals from the patient, learn how to either fabricate or order specific devices, such as a transtibial socket or a custom knee ankle foot orthosis, as well as provide follow-up care for the patients. For more information on the field of prosthetics and orthotics, you can visit opcareers.com. And for more information on how to become a certified prosthetist and orthotist, you can go to ncope.org or abcop.org. Thank you for your time and attention.